Naseem sir and Mr. Ashish Pandey sir. We are privileged to have with us two teachers proficient in English who will be evaluating the speeches based on content, delivery, refuted responses. Now, the I would like to explain to you rules, format and instructions. We have two categories, each comprising two teams with two speakers per team. Each team will have up two minutes to present their arguments, one in favor of the topic and the other against it. A buzzer will ring once after the first minute and twice at the end of two minutes. Please ensure you conclude your speech within the allotted time. After each speech, a member of the opposing team will ask a question and the speaker must provide a satisfactory answer during the rebuttal round. Only one rebuttal question. Speeches will be evaluated on content, clarity, delivery and how well you handle the rebuttal. And please remember that this is a platform for constructive debate, personal attacks, derogatory remarks, or disrespect towards other participants will not be tolerated. Your argument should be based on facts and logical reasoning. Stick to the topic and ensure your points are relevant to the topic. So, we have category first here on stage. And from category first we have team A from both branches. So have you done? From Lottery is done. Which team will speak first? Lottery? Huh? Then who will speak first? You have to do a lottery. Which team will speak? For the first time, who will speak second time? Yeah, but who, which team will speak first? Lalgar is our team, we have to do lottery. By way of a lottery. I told you this that day. Yes, one. One piece of paper, two papers will be there. Pratapgan name and Lalgan. And they will pick. So who will speak first? There will be lottery here. And the team A from Pratap and Lalganj will choose that which they are going to speak for or against the topic. Firstly. Announce the topic. Yes. So, for team A from category 1, we have topic technology is making children less creative. Only one will pick. The other one will automatically be sent. Have you written first to say? So, anyone? Have you written first? Have you written first? Second. First, second you have written. So only one person will take. Any one of them. Pratap Bhatt team will start the debate. Okay. So now we have Sanija Fatima from team A of category 1. And she will be speaking. She will be she will be speaking for the motion. Okay, now start. Your time starts now. Good morning, respected judges, moderators, sir, and my dear fellow debaters. Today, I, Shariza Fatma from Einstein Public School, Sitampur branch, present here to express my thoughts for the favor of the motion. Well, the motion is technology is making less creative to the children. As I am in a favor, so first argument of it is Technology is proved as a distraction more than a benefit. Well, it can be an addiction if the use of it will be unnecessary. Well, secondly, I would like to say that people say that I am aware and updated because of the technology. Well, yes, you may, but there are more sources of it. For example, newspapers. Secondly, whoever. We are Indians. We always follow our ancestors. And we always, and then, for example, Ramanujan, he was very clear for their work. And you know what? There was no technology of that time, but they deserve of many oppression, okay? After that, Aryabhat, you know what? He researched about zero. If he was not, we were not studying math. After that, I would like to say about
foregoing conclusion. History says that if there is a benefit, there is also a side effect. And the biggest side effect of the technology and internet is bad influencing. You know what about it? The bad influencing cause depression and stress. And the biggest enemy of your school career is depression. It can make collapse your performance of the study. After that, I would like to say that India, called as the grandmother of the legion, our legion transformed India. Just tell me if you think that in if you think that technology is that much important to evolve in your life, just give me by our legion more in our past. Thank you. Thank you, Sanita. Now I request please Lal Ganj to pose your rebuttal question. Only one question has to be asked. Don't you think that uh, the children who don't use, the, who use technology are as uh, creative as the children who don't use it? You are asking about the children who are using technology and internet. Are creative or not? They can be, but it is depend on the youth. It is unnecessary or not? Thank you. Now, the team Lal Ganj will speak. And for that, I would like to call Siksha Tripathi to speak against the motion. Now your time starts. Good morning, honorable judges, my fellow debaters, and all my dear friends. I am Shiksha Pradi from Class 7 Standard at Einstein Public School from Lal Ganj. And I am against the motion that technology is making children less creative. We can use technology in many outlets such as digital video programs, media and software, uh, video editing tools, coding, and robotics. Thus, we have many things to use it and everything has a good and bad impact and uh, it depends on how we use it and uh, we can uh, use it to improve our organizational skills uh, like uh, uh, com we have to create documents, files, folders on computer and uh, we also have to keep a track of passwords, emails, logins and accounts these will improve our organizational skills as much as more. Now, uh, regarding that, uh, uh, like, uh, for instance, I can also take example of my sister. She learned how to nurture a plant with the help of technology by scrolling over the internet. Now, she has a benefit of a skill that, uh, uh, how to do gardening with the use of technology she learned how to gardening and then now in conclusion I will say that technology is not the enemy of creativity it's, uh, uh, it enhances our uh, creativity only uh, like uh, technology if we talk about technology it's important uh, technology thank you Thank you, Siksha. Now, I request Team Pratapkar to pose your rebuttal question. So, as so as you think that technology is connecting and it is not an enemy of our social, okay? Just give me, just tell me why today's youngsters are being introvert if they are connecting and even they don't talk properly to their parents. Just give me an example and just give please explain this. They did not talk to their parents uh, like uh, it's not about technology. It's not about technology. They, they, if, they, if they are not talking to their parents, like we can also take example of NASA. Thank you.
now we move forward and I would like to call Vaibhavi Gupta from Team A and Pratapgarh branch to give her speech. Judges, moderator floor, my friends who are now present here. I am Abhavi Gupta of class A from IT Public School, Pratapgarh branch. My topic is technology is making children less creative. I will speak against the motion. Today I stand her position to claim that technology is making children less creative. In fact, technology is not a hindrance, but it is very beneficial. Firstly, I think technology is not making children less creative. When it comes to helping, it makes their tasks easier. And technology is just a tool which enhances the creativity of the student and exalts the possibility of human race. For example, supercomputers have enabled high calculation in the fields of physics, neutral physics, astronomy, etc. Secondly, technology provides a platform that inspires digital art, creative expression, coding platform allows children to, own, to make their own video games and things that were previously unimaginable. Now, moreover, my uh, technology provides a platform like Instagram, social media that, that allows children to showcase their hidden talents and in, uh, in conclusion I have to say that technology is not a effect on creativity. It opens the doors to, to children that they can showcase their talents and they can do what they can not do can't do in the front of many people. Thank you and have a nice day. I request, yes, start your rebuttal question. As you say that the technology is creative. See, if technology is creative, how people who are creative say that they have to become creative, they have to get away from technology. There are many people, one example of that is Ed Sheeran. Technology is creative, but when you are using it, not very good purpose, that was too long. Adults who are uh, above 20, they use, uh, uh, they use technology in a very wrong way. Thank you. Very good. Okay. I invite Sumit Varna from Pratapgarh branch to deliver his speech. Speak now. Halal Ganj, yes. Good morning, respected judges. This is Sumit Verma from EPS Lal Guns here to speak in the favor of the motion that says technology makes children less creative. So first of all, we should know about what is technology. Technology is applied knowledge of latest application. Technology is applied knowledge of latest application. In my opinion, that the technology makes children less creative is true. I can prove it that some researches, it is authentically researches. Researches show that the creative thinking score has been declined by 21% since 1990 due to technology. Why? Excessive, excessive screen time can reduce children's ability by 50%. It also reduces drawing, reading, and imaginative play, etc. and etc. Imaginative play. Children who use technology excessively are 25% less likely to be creative. They will be not creative. As you know that Shakuntala Devi, the great humanoid calculator, she is the great, powerful calculator, human calculator. The Eva the calculator, she she did immense, she can solve immense calculations, complex calculations within a second because there she was of form ancient time and there was not too much fright of technology. 70% of the children aged from 2 to 5 years use digital media for at least 30 minutes a day. It's an alarming. 
we are raising the generation of screen watchers not creative thinkers so at last i want to say that the technology is just a tool don't make it human substitute thank you I request the Bob Gar team to pose your initial question. Can you please tell me how technology is uh, affecting creativity in children? Yes, as in older older times that uh, when there was not calculator, children do calculate calculate things by hand, by manually. But now technology has came, so they directly do it, and this can decrease their mental ability as well as creativity. Welcome the team from Nalgund and the Parkway. You came with full preparations. Now it's time to leave the stage. Thank you very much. Nalgund's team will speak first, <coughs> and for that, I would like to call speaker from Team B of Nalgund, Manasvi Mish, you uh, know, Srishti Mishra. To speak for the motion. Good morning, all of you present here. This is Trishti Mishra, a student of 18th standard from Einstein Public School, Lagrange Branch, and I'm here for today's debate competition. And my topic is. Video game has a positive influence on children. So first of all, we should know about this topic. So video games have become long the topic of controversy, but many agree they have a negative impact on children. However, the research and evidence suggests that they have a positive influence on children. Video games can enhance our cognitive skills such as leadership and collaboration, practical questions and solving methods as well. We can take the examples of the games like uh, so, Stardew Valley and uh, The Legend of Zelda. They are uh, very be best game for increasing our IQ level as well as our uh, uh, good mindset as well. Some of top in uh, gaming influencers recently met with our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi Das Modi sir for talking about that how to promote video games. There are many ways to earn money from the gaming. We can take the example of Rummy Gold Pro, which provides a lot, a lot of money to the gamers. However, we can take the example of uh, Saurabh Joshi. He is uh, uh, becoming the uh, best blogger as well as the best gamer. He is uh, taking the uh, taking much money or earning much money from the uh, gaming. And at the last of my topic, just only I would like to say or conclude that video games are not inherently bad or. Uh, harmful to our children by embracing videos like learn uh, like uh, video games we can uh, teach or learn the students that uh, in very funny way and in very entertainment way thank you all have a good day very good trishti i request team pratapgarh to pose your rebuttal question so my question to you is are there any specific journeys for video game being developing those for personal health and mental health no there are no uh, no any way to uh, increase our personal health issue because it depends on the user that how much time they are using they are using that video games are uh, increasing our iq level as well as our creativity skills also thank you Anshika Tiwari to speak for the motion. Good morning to all the judges, moderators, teachers, and fellow debaters. Today, I, Anshika Tiwari from DPS, Pratap Vijnan, want to challenge a common misconception that video games are. So please, can I have a time? Today I am Shivati Vahari from my team public school, 
Google Glass want to challenge the common misconception that video games are harmful to children. In fact, I firmly believe that video games can be helpful for children in many ways. Firstly, it can increase our cognitive skills such as problem solving, decision making and multitasking. And players must think critically and strategically to overcome challenges, promoting their mental ability and quick thinking. Secondly, it can foster creativity and self-expression. Sandbox games like Minecraft build players to developing their imagination and innovation. Thirdly, it can be a good for our health. It makes our promoting teamwork and communication skills. Multiplayer video games require players to collaboration and coordination. While challenging games promote quick thinking, their mental ability and their IQ level. In conclusion, I like to say, video games are not not a harmful for us. It is it depends totally depend on you why you use this excessive using because excessive using of anything can harm us. And in last, I like to end my speech by saying a few lines, click by click, lessons unfold, fun and learning, your minds to mold. Video games a powerful tool for growth and knowledge and magical rule. Thank you to all. Present and Shikha Tiwari. Now, Lalgan seems to pose your epical question. Hello. Uh, I am asking the question here, how you can say the excessive use of technology is bad? Video game. Sorry. Excessive use of anything is can be bad, whether it's a video game or food. If I say that excessive use of food very harmful to you that it causes uh, it causes obesity so you don't eat, eat food why so the excessive using of anything totally depends on you not on the video game thank you very much for that i invite manasvi mishra to present her argument Good morning everyone. My name is Manashri Mishra. I am from Einstein Public School, Branch, Lalgan. My topic is Video Game has a positive influence on children. I am in against. Online gaming has positive and negative effect on players. On negative side, online gaming can lead to addiction which can result antipathic towards the real environment and social isolation. Online gaming can negatively impact school program, taking time away from other educational activities like homework and reading. Online gaming can increase risk of anxiety, depression, aloneness and negative emotions. Online gaming can also give a player who plays online game actively may exhibit it exhibit it exhibit aggressive behavior at home or at school online game also increase isolation social isolation because players must focus on winning and neglect other activities and duties. Online gaming can cause sleep, poor quality of sleep and sleep disorder. Online gaming can increase the addiction which can cause mental health issue. The conclusion, the signification relationship between online games and the academic program. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Now, Pitabha team to pose rebuttal question. Can you provide any evidence that what is the relation between a violent video game and the real world aggression? Okay. Um, I think when we play video game, it's an imagination. When we play a real game, it's a wealthy for our health and other things. It can be a mental health when you play the real games it can also your burning a calories 
and also be a my your heartbeat will run and tell with the your blood will be vessels also helping the all the body will be be activate and also it's good for your mind and it's your mind fresh and while playing a video game you will sit up continuously and your and playing the game it can be fat for you in your body now i request anaya khan to present her argument against the topic good morning respected judges moderators sir teachers and all my fellow debaters this is anaya khan from my state public school pratapgarh branch today i am here in front of you all to debate on a topic that video games have positive influence on children i am against this topic because the first and one of the main reason is academic issues children are getting addicted to play video games instead of focusing to their studies and maybe there are chances that they will choose video games over their academics which is definitely going to give a negative impact on their academic results and the second reason is risk of addiction there is a lot of risk of addiction in those video games because video games are made entertaining and that entertaining video games make children get addicted to it easily and now furthermore their children are also getting socially disconnected they focus on their video games instead of spending time with their families and friends i think that this is the ideal time of a child to spend time with your family and friends and now the last but not the least reason for me being against this topic is mental and physical health issues a gamer can also be a victim of insomnia carpal tunnel syndrome and many more and also he can be a victim of disturbed sleep which will make his health go down and in the last we get to a conclusion that video games can be entertaining but its negative impact can't be ignored or overlooked i would like to end my speech with a quote which is video games can can create a um, goal achievement in those virtual worlds but in reality real life action is needed thank you everyone lalgan sir to pose your total question as you have said that uh, video video games are reason for addiction right but if your students are addicting from video games so why they are not addicting from their books and their stories why as i mentioned in my speech also that their the game developers need those video games more entertaining which made them addicted to it but uh, they found the study boring just because it contains those educational things that's why thank you all of you well done now you may leave the stage Will start, and I request Abhinav Singh to present his argument for the motion. Fourth, policy maker and educator can use the data from the standardized test 
to uh, make an informed decision about what to make changes and where to make changes. Fifth point is that if a student knows that they will be motivated, uh, if a student will know that they will be evaluated on the basis of standardized test, they will be motivated and be serious about their studies. Sixth point is that standardized test provide a uniform way for the comparison across the region like uh, state, district and national level. Uh, and it also helps in identifying the disparities in the educational fields and uh, it ensures the academic standard in the diverse region. And seventh and last point is that it, pro it offers merit-based merit -based, uh, method for by which uh, it, it provides a merit-based evaluation which can highlight and uh, reward student achievement irrespective of their socio-economic background. In conclusion, I want to conclude that standardized tests are an effective method as it provides an effective way of uh, evaluating students, it prepares us for future exams and uh, it, uh, it gives a usable data for educators and uh, policy makers and hence uh, by all of this line I can conclude that standardized tests are an effective measure of tests. Thank you. I request team Pratapgarh to pose your initial question. So, as you have said that in standardized test there is equality. Now I want to ask you that how can you judge a student's complex complexity of complexity minds of human beings is true skills and true capabilities in just three or four hours on test sheet? How can you judge his whole whole capacity in just three hours? Okay. So if you will study standardized tests clearly, you will get to know that these tests are made for uh, evaluating the crucial uh, uh, and crucial and foundational knowledge like math and learning and other skills. Uh, and uh, for uh, comparing other skills like uh, creativity, you can improve it, you can improve the level of standardized tests and the school, schools can use many types of methods to evaluate uh, the other skills. Where, uh, but moreover, the designers of the uh, standardized tests are making are minimizing the gaps uh, gaps and the cultural biases. Thank you. So before we proceed, I would like all of you to keep silence. You have been invited here as an observer to observe the things and you have to learn. Just don't speak among yourself. Okay. Now I invite Mayank Mishra to present his argument against the motion. Mayank Mishra. Good morning, respected judges, moderators, and all present here. I am Mayank Mishra of Class 10 from Einstein Public School, Pratapur. I am here to put my arguments in against the motion that is standardized tests are an effective measure for students ability. While standardized tests are often sorted as a fair and objective way for gaining students knowledge. But I think they often fall short in several significant ways. Firstly, standardized tests often fail to capture the full range of students ability and skills. So, and these tests uh, mainly focus on a narrow set of skills and knowledge which can displace or disregard the student's true creativity and its ability. A student might perform poorly in an MCQ based test but he can perform extraordinary in, a, in hand or problem solving or collaborating projects. Secondly, the standardized test disproportionately uh, uh, affects students from diverse backgrounds. Socioeconomic factors, access to resources, and educational support can all influence students' outcomes, creating disparity that does not actually reflect students' true capability. Furthermore, the high stakes of standardized tests often create test anxieties, which can impair the students' test results and can does not represent students' true ability and, and skills. In conclusion, I would like to say that students' knowledge, students' ability, students' life skills and which are all important in this real world scenario should be judged uh, uh, experientially, not by just the theoretically. Thank you everyone. Team Lalkan to pose your little question. Good 
So according to him, standardized tests tests test give us anxiety and stress. So I want to ask you that if these test these simple tests will give you stress and anxiety, then how can you prove that the higher professional exams like uh, school entrance exam, which give a lot of anxiety and stress, are fair and widely acceptable and termed as necessary? That is why I am saying that these create test anxiety and you are saying that if a student is facing test anxiety in just small test, you, you know that all students are not like us. Some students are need, need uh, special support and not all students are as intelligent as us and as like you. And the, the test anxiety creates, uh, test anxieties are not just uh, are not just created by the uh, seriousness of the exam. These are some naturally occurring in the students' students' own mind. And uh, this tense anxiety will affect students' creativity and knowledge to giving in this examination. So that is why I am opposing this. Thank you. Now I invite Ananya Singh to present her argument for the motion. Respectful greetings to honorable judges, benevolent auditors, esteemed opponents, and every single IT senior present here. I am Ananya Singh, a student of class 11th from Einstein Public School, Pratapgarh branch. Today, I stand before you all to advocate for the effectiveness of standardized tests such as SAT, KCD, and many other assessments. They have been a long term cornerstone for education evaluation in countries like India and for good reasons. I would like to take up my stand that standardized tests are examination given in the consistent condition with uniform uh, questions and scoring. Respected members, I would like to shape up the arguments that are in these ways. First, its objective. Its obje objective is to provide a uniform argument that will be measurable for all the students in all the categories with same uniform consistent manner. Secondly, I would like to evaluate data driven consistency. Respected honors, I would like to have some immeasurable calculations that are pro provided for in, in verified some concepts like equality, accountability, benchmark, appeal policy, and many more. Words are not enough to calculate its benefit, but it's for our 